African Americans have resisted historic and modern day oppression in all forms, basically since the arrival upon these shores. And since then, there have been efforts to advocate for dignified life in a society that is fair and just. Today, we'll talk about Black resistance, which is the theme of this year's Black History Month, as well as look at notable people and events and books and authors. Let's get into it. There is so much to explore here, but we'll just touch on three areas of focus for today's video, sports, politics, and art all topics that have absolutely no ability to be polarizing whatsoever, right? Black athletes have used sports as a way to advocate for social causes and political agendas. Serena Williams is an absolute trailblazer who's had to continually advocate for herself and others on and off the court, battling sexism, racism, and beauty standards. She uses her platforms to support black lives and does so early and often, calling attention to the killings of Christian Taylor, Philando Castile, Alton Sterling, and George Floyd. Over her career, she's had to deflect criticism against her style and her body, including having the cat suit she's known to wear in competitions banned at French Opens. She supports fellow Black athlete activists, like when she expressed vocal support for Colin Kaepernick and Eric Reid after being blackballed by the NFL. Every athlete, every human, and definitely every African American should be completely grateful for and honored how Colin and, and Eric are, are doing so much for the greater good. She's done work to combat violence in black and brown neighborhoods, and she supported and promoted a variety of national causes, including building schools in Jamaica, Kenya, Uganda, and Zimbabwe. Jackie Robinson endured racial discrimination his entire life, and that definitely did not stop when he joined the Dodgers in 1947. Robinson would protest racism on and off the field and often responded to questions posed by civic organizations and the media concerning racism against African-Americans. He helped to open the door to hundreds of great black athletes after him by breaking the six decade long color barrier in Major League Baseball. Oh yeah, he wasn't the first black MLB player. There were three before him actually. The Providence Grays had William Edward White, who was white passing, no pun intended, and brothers Moses Fleetwood Walker and Weldy Walker both played for the Toledo Blue Stockings. And of course, we cannot forget about Tommy Smith and John Carlos and the iconic photo from the 1968 Olympics. Smith and Carlos finished the 200 meter race winning gold and bronze respectively. They solemnly approached the podiums to receive their medals, but they did so shoeless, only wearing black socks. They accepted their medals and just as the national anthem began to play, they did this. For the entire duration of the national anthem, Smith and Carlos had their heads bowed and raised a black glove fist in the air. Let me know down in the comments if you know why they raised opposite fists. The move was a protest against racial injustice in America and also to show solidarity to those fighting for equality. But the fists and the shoes were just a couple of the symbolic gestures. Tommy Smith later said, The right glove that I wore on my right hand signified the power within black America. The left glove, my teammate John Carlos wore on his left hand, made an art, my right hand to his left hand, also signify black unity. The scarf that was worn around my neck signified blackness. John Carlos and me wore socks, black socks without shoes to also signify our poverty. You'll also notice that Carlos had his tracksuit top unzipped, which was a violation of Olympic etiquette to show the solidarity with working class Americans. He wore a necklace of beads, which he described were for the individuals that were lynched or killed or that no one said a prayer for. It was for those thrown off the sides of the boats in the middle passage. This black power salute accompanied with the bowed heads during the national anthem sparked uproar. Using the medal ceremony to show solidarity to oppressed black people worldwide was seen to have been a direct outgrowth of the political climate of the late 1960s. These athletes and so many others have used their public forum to bring awareness to issues that affect society while also resisting the idea that they cannot or should not speak about political cultural or social issues. Black athlete activists often suffer personal and economic consequences due to their stances, their speech, and their actions, but to them, it's all been worth it to see change. Whew, okay, that was a lot. 
Drop this video a like if you learned anything new at all in that. And before we talk about books, let's quickly look at politics. Historically and today, Black people have worked the political angle to find their rightful space in this country. Legislative action to deal with controversial racial issues often comes late and usually as a result of Black people clawing for what feels like basic freedoms. The banning of discriminatory employment practices by federal agencies, unions, and companies engaged in war-related work was all the result of A. Philip Randolph and the March on Washington movement. They threatened to march with a 50,000 person crew into Washington, D.C. Not only that, but the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, and the Fair Housing Act were all concessions to the civil rights and Black power movements. Every advancement and improvement to our quality of life and our access to levers of power to determine the futures and livelihoods have been achieved through struggle. But John Lewis advised, do not get lost in a sea of despair. Be hopeful, be optimistic. Our struggle is not the struggle of a day, a week, a month, or a year. It is the struggle of a lifetime. Never, ever be afraid to make some noise and get in good trouble, necessary trouble. All right, the moment you've all been waiting for, let's talk about books. There are three books that I wanna chat about today, but also the authors of these books, Women, Race and Class, Go Tell It on the Mountain, and Asada, an autobiography. Women, Race and Class by Angela Y. Davis was published in 1981. It's an examination of the intersections of race, gender, and class, and explores how these intersections shape the experiences of black women in America. Davis argues that the intersection of race, gender, and class creates unique experiences and challenges for Black women that can't really be reduced to any one of these categories alone. Throughout the book, Davis analyzes the ways that racism and sexism have been used to exploit and oppress Black women, particularly in the context of the labor movement and the fight for women's suffrage. She explores the role of Black women in the history of resistance and social justice movements and highlights their contributions to these efforts. On top of historical analysis, Davis also offers a feminist critique of traditional Marxist theory and argues that it must be expanded to address the experiences of Black women. She argues that Black women have often been excluded from mainstream feminist and Marxist movements, and those movements must actively work to include and address their experiences if they really want to be inclusive and effective. Davis has been a member of the Communist Party USA and is a self-identified Marxist-Leninist. She's been a leading voice in various political and social justice movements, including the Civil Rights Movement, the Anti-War Movement, the Feminist Movement, and the LGBTQ Rights Movement. In addition to writing, Davis has been a professor at several universities and continues to be an active voice in contemporary political and social justice movements. She's widely recognized as one of the most important and influential thinkers of our time. Go Tell It on the Mountain by James Baldwin is a novel set in 1930s Harlem, New York. It explores the experiences of a young black man named John Grimes as he comes of age. It's told through a series of flashbacks that alternates between John's perspective and the perspective of his family members, including his mother, father, uncle, and grandmother. It delves into the themes of identity, religion, sexuality, and race, and highlights the ways that religion has been used to justify racial oppression and to control Black people. The novel shows the struggles of the characters, including John questioning his faith and the challenges faced by his family members as they navigate their lives and their relationships. It's a powerful commentary on the Black experiences and the complexities of the American experience more broadly. At its core, this is a story about Black resistance and the struggle for self-discovery. The novel portrays characters' efforts to find meaning and purpose in a world that often seems hostile and oppressive, and since it's semi-autobiographical, it's also reflective of the struggles that Baldwin faced in his own life. Through his writing, Baldwin sought to challenge the dominant cultural narratives of his time and to give voice to the experiences of Black Americans. His work continues to be an important source of inspiration for contemporary activists and scholars. The last book is Asada, an autobiography by Asada Shakur, who's a former member of the Black Panther Party and Black Liberation Army. The book was first published in 1987 and provides a first-hand account of Shakur's life and experiences as a political activist and Black feminist. It begins with Shakur's childhood in North Carolina, where she grew up in a family of sharecroppers and was exposed to the realities of racial injustice and poverty at a pretty early age. It then goes on to detail her involvement with the Civil Rights Movement and the Black Power Movement, and then her eventual membership in the Black Panther Party and the Black Liberation Army. Throughout the book, Shakur reflects on her experiences as a political activist, the challenges that she faced as a woman and as a person of color, and the reasons 
behind her political beliefs and actions. She also provides a critical analysis of the political and social landscape of the 1960s and 70s, including the state's repression of black radical organizations and the broader struggle for racial justice and equality. In addition to her personal story, the autobiography provides a historical record of the civil rights movement, the Black Panther movement, and the Black Liberation Movement. It highlights the experiences and perspectives of Black women in these movements and provides a nuanced understanding of the political and social context of that time. All of these books, which will be linked down below by the way, they provide historical perspective and insight into the Black experience. They shed light on the struggles and sacrifices of Black people throughout time and provide an understanding of the long and ongoing fight for racial justice and equality, while also giving context to contemporary issues and debates. I also hope that these books and the people and the events that we covered today serve as a source of inspiration and empowerment for people who are working to promote racial justice and equality. And most of all, I hope that they help to illustrate the ways that resistance has shaped the lives of Black Americans. <laughs>